I grew up in Great Jiu Jitsu. It was, I mean, I was born pr practically on the mats. So it's, my family already did this for many years back in Brazil. Yes, to America was new, but back in Brazil, former pre I think it was two or three former presidents took class with my father. And my father taught everybody back in the day. It's not a question of having a choice or not. The way I think we look at it, you want your kid to be a football player? We give him a football for Christmas every year. He can choose to play baseball, but how is he going to see? It's like we guide, we're guiding. We're not choosing. So in the moment they say, hey, I want to do this, hey, go ahead, who we'll back him up? Not a problem. It's not harder. Um, he would treat us like another student. It wasn't okay, I'm more demand, I got you gotta do more. No. It's a lot of people thought think that my father taught us how to fight. No, he taught us how to teach. Fighting is just for the fun of it, just for the hell of it. Before there was Pelé, before there was Ronaldinho, before there was the soccer players, volleyball, beach volleyball, volleyball, basketball, there was my father. My father was the first national hero on, in sports. There was nothing before Pelé. That was way before Pelé. That was pretty much like people think, oh my God, Pelé was the first one. My father came before him and was teaching jiu -Jitsu. So it's been around in Brazil for a long time. So it's that old, takes 10 years for overnight success. But people look, it's like, oh my God, they just came out of nowhere, built the UFC and, and started fighting business. No, no people don't know that Horian, when he first came to America, he can handle. <laughs> Slap on the streets, spend a year like this. The grace in name it could be a blast or it can be a curse. If you know jiu-jitsu, it's a blast. If you don't know, it will be a curse. <laughs> it's a very heavy name to carry around. That's why we tell the members of the family, hey, we come in from self-defense fighting our family. So you better know. You don't have to follow career, but you have to know how to defend yourself. People will challenge, people will come up and say, hey, your father, your uncle, your cousins, your brothers, they all fought. How about you? Uh, no, I'm a soccer player. It's like, really? <laughs> you better know how to defend yourself. So we don't, we don't force this, the family members to follow the footsteps, to become a fighter, to become a teacher. You can do whatever you want. You just have to know how to defend yourself. You better know, because the question will come up. About 14 years old. <laughs> I knew I can give a man a hard time. 14 is still a kid. And the guys, adults, are having a hard time rolling with me to just sparring. It's, it gives a, a, a power for 14 years old. And it's like, wow, I'm dealing with a man and he have a hard time with me. When another 14 years old get in a confrontation, it's almost like, look, dude, don't, just walk away. You're nothing, you're a kid. Because I fight men. For you to know, a student of mine, a long time ago, once brought a son, his son, maybe six, seven years old, to the academy. And the father introduced, hey, the father's just, a, Blue belt, just starting up jiu-jitsu, about a year of training, year and a half. Hey, this is my son. The kid looked at me, he's like, I can beat you. I was like, nice to meet you too, little guy. What makes you think you can beat me? You guys, I can beat my dad, my dad, dad beats you. I look, I'm really bad. <laughs> Do you see, but that's a, a kid at that age, getting used to spar with the father and beating the father. You took another man, he's like, man, you're nothing. I can beat you, because I beat him, he's big too. At that age, it's like um, 
it's almost like um, there's so many of us in the Gracie family that time to come that, hey, I can do this. Put me in, guys. Reverse psychology. Nah, you're not that good. What do you mean I'm not that good? Now we're going to put the other brother, the other cousin. It's like, what about me? Choose me, choose me. Nah, it's not, you're not made for this. You don't have the heart. What? I'll prove you guys. Put me in. Come on. It's like, it's always a battle for us to get in. You see, it's not, so it's a reverse psychology that we use. <laughs> it was about, I was seven, but in Brazil at the time, you can only compete as eight years old. So they signed me up as a twin brother with Hoyler. So they signed me up as a, they're both, they're twins. They're both eight, but I was seven. It's a BJJ tournament competition for kids. You could only compete at eight years, starting at eight years old back then. So they put me in like, you guys are twins today. Once I left Brazil, I stopped with the gi, comp gi competition and started teaching back in the days in the garage with Horton's house. And teaching, sometimes a student will bring, hey, I have a wrestling instructor, I have a, a karate instructor, a boxing instructor. And he wants to come over, and you guys say that you're so good. He wants to come over. He wants to come over and test it out. Sure. But what he was fighting. We were trying to gain a new student, so we, it wasn't a fight for me back in the garage days. Guys, who come in, judo guys, who come in. Let me try out. Let me see how good you guys are. You guys saying that you can fight anybody. So okay, you do your thing, kickboxer. You do your thing. I'll do my thing. Let's go. He's punching and kicking for real. But I'm trying to gain a new student, so I'm just controlling and proving to him, hey, see if you don't know jiu-jitsu. So we're trying to gain a new student. It was a, almost like it wasn't a fight for us. For him, it was a fight. I trust the great jiu-jitsu style. So yes, I study all the other styles, for me to know what's coming at me. How would you set me up if you're a boxer? How, when you step this way, you're gonna punch here. If you step that way, you're gonna punch there. Or if you're a taekwondo guy, when you turn this way, you're gonna kick this way. You're gonna kick that way when you step that over there. You're gonna punch if you step over here. S study, not for me to use, but for me to know what's coming at me. They didn't know the ground game. So yes, they're all difficult. A boxer, a kickboxer, a karate guy, a taekwondo. Uh, uh, they will hit. If they catch me with a hit, I'll go down. I'm not punch proof. But if they miss, I'll get in a clinch. I'll take them down. And then it becomes, well, he did some wrestling. But wrestling is very incomplete. Or judo. He did some judo. He's good on throwing, but he didn't know the ground game that we had. He didn't have the ground game. So it was, yes, the other style was incomplete. That's why we had the advantage. But we're not punch proof, we're not, you see, throw proof, no. Yeah, he'll take me down and go on, the fight will go on. So, but that's, a lot of people in the beginning thought the Graces are so arrogant. They're trying to prove that their style is the best. That was a misunderstanding. We're not arrogant. We're in a quest. You say your boxing is great. You can knock everybody out. Hmm. Can I test? You see, let's put it to the test. So people say the karate is good and the wrestling is good. and Everybody claimed that their style is good. We're just curious to know. Well, what if we take all the weight division, all the, the gloves, rules, you do your thing, I do my thing, let's see what works. So we're in a quest to find out what's, what, what's the best style, you see? And we've been proving that for many years. And then today, everybody has to know Grace Jiu-Jitsu.
if you know if you take this juice out of the equation you go back to be a pure wrestler there's no chokes no arm locks no punches in wrestling against a boxer who only throw punches not even kicks you see so or a kickboxer who throws kicks punch but he doesn't do any takedowns so he goes back to a it's stone age almost great juice is the bone glues all the pieces together I am a product of my father's work. I'm just doing what he started. We don't believe in good students and bad students. We believe in good teachers and bad teachers. So if you show up, I guarantee you're going to learn this, that, 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 that. Well, he doesn't know he's a bad student. Not with us. If you don't learn, it's our fault. So everybody's the same to us. We teach from the heart, so we didn't never complete high school. We never went to business seminars. But when Horry and I were teaching at the Grace Academy, 99 out of 100 that show up at the academy, 100 students show up to see the academy. 99 will sign up, and we never took the seminars, and we just signed them up from the heart. The one that don't sign up is because it's from out of town. Lives in another state, can't take the class, can't sign up. But 99 out of 100 will sign up. It's like back in the graduate days, before we opened the first Grace Academy, and we were teaching half an hour privates in two garages. It start at 8.30 in the morning. 8.30, goes until 12.30, start again at 3 goes until 9 o'clock at night, half an hour private. There was two houses, two garages, full, all day long. There was about 107 students in a waiting list. Hey, if somebody missed class, can you call me? Somebody can't make it. So a student calls like, hey man, I can't make it tomorrow. Done, call the next, the first guy on the list. Oh man, tomorrow I can't, call the next guy. When we opened up the Grace Academy, we already came in, it's like 250, 300 students almost. So it's, it's, but we teach from their heart. We never thought about the business part. So it becomes natural. I don't believe in competition. I'm not talking about MMA, point system. I don't believe in competition. Martial art was not made for competition. Forget which one is better than the other. Which martial art was made for competition? None of them. The martial art was made for you to defend yourself in a street fight situation. All of them. So martial art is to defend yourself, self-defense, all of them. Competition is ruining martial art. Point system. Touch, score a point. Yep, I would have scored a point on that, I win. But that's not self-defense anymore. That's not to defend yourself. It would be totally changed. That's not how you fight, how you defend yourself. If you have to throw a punch, you're going to rip through his chest. You're not going to tap his chest and score a point. So I don't believe in competition, point system. It's very hard to teach self-defense. Very hard. Much easier to teach point system, competition, and being athletic, and... What if I'm not athletic? What if I'm not, don't want to compete? I'm not interested in that. You see? So, but a lot of the schools, a lot of the schools guide into the competition point. Oh, you got to train harder. You got to go hard. You got to be athletic. You got to be in shape. It's like, because it's much easier to do that. Instead, knowing the technique and teach the right self-defense, the right moves. My father used to say it takes a minimum of 10 years to know somebody's character. And sometimes even after, after 10 years, you still don't know the person's character. So to get a black belt, we have to know the person's character. We're not giving a black belt. You have to know it's beyond the mat. Is he a drink alcohol? Is he alcoholic? Is he do drugs? Is he hygiene? 
You see, it's everything counts. It's not just, it's a personal life that we build again. It's not to get a black belt, at least with my family. Some people just say, hey, you've been training long enough here, you earn it. Don't care about your past, what you do in your off time. With me, it goes, my father it goes beyond the mat, including chewing tobacco. Dude, but they're gonna say, you're gonna tell me, but if I chew tobacco, I say, I'm not harming anybody. It's me, my gig. It doesn't matter. You serve as example for the little kids that are gonna see you. Sorry. I did give up the tobacco. Oh, we we'll wait, no problem. Until you give up. <laughs> you gotta give up, or we're gonna wait until you give up. But you ain't moving up. We don't have to promote you. You can be a brown belt before you're black for the rest of your life. Not a problem. Either you give, give him the alcohol, the smoking, the drugs. And, but that's why we have 10 years to know. Sometimes it's 12, 15, 17 years before they get a black belt. And if they don't change, not in a rush. We have plenty of time. We're very patient to teach. We're teachers. That's what we do. We don't cut ties and, oh my God, he's not going to stop chewing tobacco. It's your choice. But I will explain to you that that's not a good example. With my guys, I tell them, hey, you want to get drunk? Get home, lock yourself in the room, and get drunk. You, your wife, your girlfriend, I don't care. But don't take a picture in public holding a beer. Don't go out in public and get drunk because a father of one of your little girls that take class on the student, one of your students, is watching you getting drunk, getting stupid in public. You see? So what you do in your private room, man, I don't care. But I'll try to fix it. And they understand that, that, hey, it's not good. I don't even, I wouldn't even take a picture with you if you're holding a beer. I'll tell you, put your beer down, please. You thank me later. I did that so many times. <laughs> I treat them like a student when it comes time to teach. Martial art. In life, I'm totally the opposite. Life is like kids. My job as a father is to get you out of trouble. So if you don't get in trouble, I can't do my job. <laughs> How many times I use that one? My, my son used to play soccer. My son used to play soccer before he decided to fight. I would go to high school. He went to a whole high school, got a scholarship for a couple of colleges to go play soccer. And suddenly decided to, you know what? I don't want to play soccer anymore. I don't want to go to college. I want to fight. All right, cool. I never forced him to do either one. He was going to go to college. Last year in high school, changed his mind, decided to get in the cage. All right, good. The entire team for soccer for high school and the, the club team, every time they go play, I tell them the rules are yellow card. If you guys get a yellow card, it's my yellow card. $10 a yellow card. If you get a red card, get kicked out of the game, I'll pay you $20, my red card. I'll pay you $20 per card. Sometimes the kids will get kicked out of the game. They're walking out, they're pointing to the stand, Mr. Gracie, $20. The point is, which kid wants to get kicked out of the game. They all want to play the game. But the coaches are talking so much of, oh my God, don't commit any fouls. Oh my God, don't play hard. And you see the other team kicking my, my team over here, beating my team up. Kids, it's okay. Play tough. They don't want to get kicked out. But if they get kicked out, they get paid for it. My father used to, let's say, I don't know the transition back in the day, but let's say if I win the match, the tournament, he'll give me $10. If I lose, he'll give me 20. Do I wanna lose? No. But if I lose, it's okay, man. I get paid for more, you see. But do I really wanna lose to get more money? I don't wanna lose. The kids are playing soccer. They don't want to get a red card and get kicked out. They want to play the game. 
But doesn't I mean play like a little sissy, man, and let the other team beat you. You can play tough, you can play contact, it's okay. It's, if you get caught, man, you get pushed, you get pushed the guy back and the referee sees him kick you out of the game. You see, I'll, I'll buy that, that card is mine. I lost about two or three times, three times in my career. And first thing is go back to the locker room is like think what happened? Where did the train derail? Because I trained to win, didn't train to lose. So we just go back and figure out what happened. And we sit down right away and we go through the fight and figure out what did I do to lose? Or what did I, what, what I, what I didn't do that made me lose? There is a lot of tough guys out there. There is a lot of talent guys out there. But without discipline to get up and practice, you won't stay on top forever. Talent, toughness will go away. You have to have discipline, but that's for everything. You gotta have discipline to get up and do what you gotta do.